Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show how I make a stitched flower. I use the daisy stitch, which is a very fun, intricate stitch where you just make a little petal one at a time. We'll create these in a rounded format to make this really fun and full flower full of different petals. Now I use three different colors of embroidery floss to get this effect. It kind of looks like variegated thread. And you can of course use variegated thread to complete this project. But sometimes I can't always find the variegated colors that I'm looking for. Perhaps I'm trying to match it to some fabric or I want it for a particular piece. So this gives you a lot of options on how to make that same effect, adding depth to your stitches. It's a very fun effect. You can change the size, making it as small or as large as you want, making the petals as full or as sparse as you want. I make it in a circular format where I trace a circle and that's my template for creating this flower. But you don't have to make it that precise. You can make it a little wonky. You can make some of the petals look like they're folded or smaller than others. This gives you a lot of options on the ways to personalize your stitched flower. Now here's my process. So here is the flower that we're going to stitch today. It's kind of like a very intricate daisy. Depending on how you vary it, depending on the colors that you use, you can also make it look like a sunflower or some other flowers with lots of little petals, perhaps a mum. Now for this one, I use a little button in the center. You can use a little jewel or a button just as easily. Now I try and coordinate my button with the fabric that I'm using it for if I know in advance that I'm going to be using it in a certain situation. But for the most part, I just try and do the opposite on the color wheel or something that looks nice with this. So for this one, because it was a lot of purples, a yellow button made sense to me, but you could easily vary the button to whatever color you want or use another embellishment. Now for today's demonstration, I'm just gonna stitch it onto this white quilted fabric, mainly because it shows a nice contrast for the camera when I use my stitches in this beautiful pinks. But I wanted to coordinate it with this particular piece of fabric, so that's why I chose those pinks. What I do is I'd stitch the flower here onto the quilted fabric, and you could just as easily stitch it to your printed fabric. And then I'm gonna put the pink fabric here, the pattern fabric behind it. So that's why I made this selection. You don't have to do it in the same method that I'm using. You could just stitch onto your pattern fabric. Now I'm also choosing to use a few colors. I like to use two or three colors, so I'm using these beautiful pinks. And then for the center of my flower, I'm using a little fabric button here. It's a little button covered in like a little textile and I think it's very cute and it's appropriate and it also matches the background fabric. So now to get started to make this simple stitch flower, the first thing I need to decide on is the size of a flower. Because it's rounded, I'll use a round template here, but you could vary it if you wanted to. So I'm going to take my template here, it's just because it's round shape, I could use a bottle cap just as easily, and I know I'm going to cut around the fabric so I'm going to just give it a little space here. And using my Frixian pen, which I find in the office supply store, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, I make my circle mark. Now this pen can be erased with the heat of an iron, and that's why I use it. I've also threaded my needles with the appropriate colors of the floss that I'm going to use today, and I'm going to use all stri six strands. The next thing I like to do is just make a little center guide. I just choose the center of my circle and I make that little circle because that's where I want the center to be. I'm going to play around with it. And then I can start my piece. I like to start with my darkest color thread, so I'm going to go with this beautiful fuchsia. I have my six strands of embroidery floss knotted on the end of the thread. And then with my needle, I'm just going to come up right in the center here and I usually start at about 12 o'clock. So I'll just come up from the center. I make my loop, but I don't tack it down yet. Pull the floss somewhat snug, but I still have my loop. And then I come up here at that 12 o'clock point, approximately, right on the edge of where I traced my circle. pull my stitch as taut as I want, 
and then just stitch it down. So this is just the daisy stitch. Just like that. And I could pull it as snug as I want. And that's a fairly big stitch, but that's okay because the future stitches will really secure it down. So now I'm just gonna to move to the side and I'm gonna go in between those first two stitches that I made in that inner circle, pulling up my stitch and I'm just going to pull it around and make another loop. And the stitch is gonna come just to the right of that first stitch. And so at approximately one o'clock, I'll make my loop up top and stitch down. And I'll continue this all the way around my circle here. You can vary the stitches with whatever distance you want. It looks a little wonky at first, but it will come together the more stitches you put down. I'll have to rethread my needle because I only like to use approximately 18 inches or 20 inches of thread at a time. This prevents it from getting really snarled with knots and it's just more usable. I do have to thread my needle more often using this method than if I had one long strand, but I also find it very easy. This way I don't have to pull out knots, which really drives me crazy. Now to make this even easier on yourself, you could always just take your marker and just mark out the little spokes of the wheel where you want all your little stitches to end up. And you can vary them whatever you want. Now because this is our first row, we don't have to have that many stitches. I'm not trying to cover the entire piece, I'm just trying to create that background row. So again, I'll add all my stitches. I like to choose my colors based on the pieces that I'm gonna stitch it down on. So that's why I chose these pinks. But you can choose any color that you want. And if you don't know ahead of time what colors you're going to use for your flowers, just choose the colors you enjoy using because those are the ones you'll gravitate to in the future. Now I'll do one more stitch here, just because I'm running out of thread. Make my last loop. And then I'll turn around on the back and knot off my thread. Trim that down. And as you can see, when I'm finished, my button will hide those center marks if I want to. I'll rethread my needle and start again. So I like to come up in between each of my initial stitches because I think it helps me space the petals and it gives a nice look. Now I like to start with the darkest color of embroidery floss because I think it makes for an interesting effect. It kind of creates a somewhat of a shadow effect and that way my lighter colors stand out a little bit better when I just stitch them over the darker colors. I stick to colors in the same family, or at least colors that are close on the color wheel, and this gives a very nice effect to the color schemes that I choose. But choose any colors you like. Don't feel that you have to do that. This is how you make your project unique and really stand out with your own style. And even though I allotted for two more stitches, I think I'll just do one more stitch here. Just varying it as I go to what works for me. I'll make that final stitch to hold down my first row of stitches and then just knot it on the back. So there I have my first row of stitches. I can come back in if I want, 
correct any of the tension here on the stitches. And I can even add more stitches if I want, but I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. It's not perfect. It doesn't look mass produced as if a machine stitched it. There are a few imperfections, but I really like the way that looks. If you want, you can fill it out with more stitches from that same color, but I'm gonna switch to my medium color now. So I have that threaded on another needle and I'm gonna start here. And again, I like to start up top. I want my first stitch to be overlapping the existing stitches in between these two stitches here. So again, I'll start at the base, right in the center circle, make my loop, and then I want that stitch to just be in between those two stitches. So I just eyeball it. I could take my marker and make the little ticks to remind me where to go, but this works just as well for me. And so I'll stitch down. I can pull that stitch a little taut, a little snug. Now I'm just gonna tilt my piece. I'm gonna skip a stitch and just go over here. And this is where you create your pattern. I like the way the darker pink is showing through, but right now I just wanna create a few stitches in this medium color to add some contrast. And I do that by just skipping an area in between those petals. So again, I'm gonna skip a stitch and just stitch in between here. So I make my loop. Come up from behind and make my stitch. And I'll continue this all the way around. Depending on how full you want to make your petals, and that will determine how many stitches you make. And you can always go back in. If I decided that this wasn't enough, I'll reevaluate after I make that row and decide if I need another row of stitches. I'll add this last stitch just on the side here. It's not a perfectly spaced pattern, but it doesn't have to be. And then I'll knot off the back. And then finally, on my last row of thread, which is my lightest thread, I'll just fill in any of the gaps. Take it slowly. I'll start up here again at the top. Make my loop, and I really like this contrast. This particular thread is just a very light, light pink, almost white, and depending on the colors you use it with, it might not even show up as pink. But I love the way it looks with the medium pink and that fuchsia. And I just like that nice contrast. Now you could use variegated thread and get a similar effect. You just make lots of stitches. So I'm gonna skip a few spots, just where I think it needs another stitch, and fill in all the way around. This is very subjective. Again, I could mark out the spots with my marker ahead of time if I wanted. Pull the petal snug and then tack it down. And I'll just continue all the way around. Now I could stop there, but I want to do one more stitch over here, just on this little empty space. So I'll complete my stitch. and then tack it down. I'll flip my piece over and knot off my thread. So now the last step before I cut out my swatch of fabric would be to get rid of those ink marks. 
So I just take a hot iron and press it down and it removes any of those ink marks. So now I have a beautiful flower. The next step is to add my button to the center. So I just choose which thread I'm going to use and I'm going to choose that medium color, that pink, and it's a very short piece of thread. And then I can decide how I want to stitch this button down. Now I did a video on different ways to stitch a two-hold button, but I'm just going to do a simple stitch. I'm going to come up from one side and go down the other. And this way there's not a lot of distraction in the center of my flower. And I can do it just a couple of times. It's not a functional button, so I don't have to worry about it falling off. But I just want it to be secure. I'll flip it over. Not this thread. And then snip the end. And now my stitched flower is ready. I can take it and cut it off this piece of quilt and then use it right here with the fabric that I intended or that inspired those color choices. So that's how I create my stitched flower. I created it as a centerpiece for one of my Stitch a Square blocks for March 2022. And now I really use this piece in other works. I hope you try your hand at it and use the colors that you like, make it the size that you like, and the shape as well. Thanks for joining me today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe.